things and they're getting some izzah and status among their community. And this is their thing, there's a mass trauma, there's an identity. You see the young, impressionable young people, they're looking at these guys and they're thinking, yeah, this guy is the man, this guy is the role model. This is called negative masculinity. No, let me tell you who the role model is. It's that young brother who imitates Yusuf alayhi salam. And who imitates that man who says, Allah says there is a man who's going to have the shade of Allah on Yom al Qiyamah. He's going to have the shade of Allah on the day of judgment where there's no shade. Who is that man? He's a man who is invited by a beautiful woman, not a skank. A beautiful woman of honor, of nobility. She invites him to indecency. Fahisha. And he declines because he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the explanation of the hadith, the woman is beautiful, noble. And no one would have known about it. Secret. Yet he fears Rabbil Alameen. Just like Yusuf salam, when he was called, when the wife of the Malik, she tries to entice him. No. A'udhu billahi min al-shaytani rajim. Seek refuge in Allah. And he's in prison wrongly because of this. This is our role model. The youth that we want to see as a role model. And let me tell you, this is the youth who has self-confidence, self-esteem. This is the youth, we call it fakhr, pride and distinction. This is a youth, we have what is called fatuwa. Fatuwa means he is a person who really has noble characteristics. The young person who says, no, I am a virgin. I am remaining pure. I am remaining chaste. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala loves this. And I would only share this with my wife. Within Islam, within nikah. And I will maintain that hijab. And remember, I'm going to say, hijab, brothers, is not just something for the sisters. Because before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the hijab upon the women for them to cover, Allah ta'ala revealed upon the Muslim man and tell the believing man to lower the gaze and to protect the private parts. And tell the believing women to lower the gaze and protect the private parts. And then he says, and tell the lower believing women to unwrap their khimar, their headscarf, and to cover their body with it. Before, hijab, brothers, we seem to forget, is for both men and women. And hijab is a code of conduct and akhlaq and behavior. And it is the behavior of haya, modesty. That I know I am ashamed to do anything which dishonors my love. That's the, that is the role model that we want to promote. We want to promote the individuals in school, in society, our youth. We say there is a pride in being a virgin, or being someone who is chaste. With someone who keeps away from promiscuity, sexual indecency, keeps away from pornography. And let me tell you, brothers, last week I'm dealing with some young brothers. And really, I've got to say, when, we do, when, I, when I analyze this issue, a lot of the blame is on the parents. Because this is your amani, your children. And when I look at their laptops, their mobile phones, their iPads, or whatever it is, they're just full of hardcore pornography. Full of hardcore porn. Like I said, this is the battle on one side. You've got porn, and what is on our side battling against pornography? And let me tell you one thing about pornography, brothers and sisters. Pornography is one of the most corrosive things in society. If you want to destroy the social fabric of a society, send in there Fahisha. And as I said, you know, Shaitan, this is what Shaitan is doing. Shaitan's objective is to promote a okay, Fahisha and indecency. As Allah says, all you believe. Follow not the footsteps of shaitan. The footsteps of shaitan is the promotion of indecency, sexual indecency and wickedness. You promote pornography, you allow pornography to be widespread in society and you see a de degeneration in the morality and the social fabric of that society. And it's not just here in Keithley, in Bradford, in England, in the UK, in Europe, it's across the whole world. Mashriq wal Maghrib, from the east to the west. Because this is so corrosive. It destroys the social fabric of society. As I said brothers, we've got this identity conflict. And just coming here, I saw a group of our young Muslim brothers. And, and you've got to realize, brothers, we are representing Islam. We're representing, here in Keithley, you are a visible Muslim. You are represent, people are looking at your behavior. And the non-Muslims, when they look at your behavior, like I said, they see Muslims selling drugs, drinking alcohol, grooming girls, abusing women. They think Islam must teach this. This is something which is from Islam. Unless we are providing the counter to this. Unless we're challenging it with what? What is the, what we have? 
أضب إلى السبيل ربك بالحكمة والموئذة الحسنة وجادل وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن. Call to the way of Allah with wisdom, with the best reminder of the book of Allah, and argue with them in the way which is. How we counter it is two things. Dawila, educate them about Islam and be a role model of the haq yourself. Represent Islam in your behavior. So a group of young brothers, they're crossing the road. The lights have changed. People are going to go, but they got a swagger, they got, the, they got that look, you know, that walk. But they're bad men. And they're, and, and they're bad eyeing me when I'm looking at them. I'm looking at them and they're giving me bad eyes. They don't even respect their own community. They're looking at the non-Muslims, obviously they disrespect them even more. They don't even respect that elder who's there to, or wanting to, and I want the best for them. So they're there swaggering across the road. And he's got a, he's got a kufi on, he's got a, a Muslim head prayer cap on. Take that cap off. You're a disgrace to that cap if you walk around and you think that you own that road. You think you're bad, you own that road. If you're bad, come and give this lecture to these people and enjoy the good and call people to tell me if you really think you are a bad man. But no, they can't do this because they can't even put a sentence together without the word mofo in it. A word which is reprehensible to us. To even use that word in Islam. To even use that word. And this is the, and they, they become desensitized. This is what I'm saying when you have a culture like this, social media like this, it desensitizes the heart. What does that word desensitize? What it means? It means that you sin and you don't even know it, brothers. It means that you commit acts of indecency and you're not even aware of it because you've got so used to it. I was in the park a couple of days ago and it's the same thing brothers. You see our young brothers, strange haircuts. And I'm not here to abuse, I'm not here to kind of make fun of anyone. I'm just reflecting a reality which is out there. Where do these haircuts come from? Because the Prophet who is our ultimate role model, who is Khulikin Azim, most exalted in character to us, is the one who we take every inspirational word from him, as said, he is the best example for us. And he says, for the Muslim male, it is haram to shave part of the head and to leave part of the head. Either you have it one layer or you have it, you can have it two layers, but don't shave and leave. Because this is what's one of the hairstyles, the stars of Jahiliya. The Arabs, they used to do this to their boys. And they did it to their boys as a sign of respect to the idols. So that's the reason that they did it. And today we see it as well. These haircuts. Mohawk style or tri-hawk style or whatever it is. And as we know, the cutting and the, you know, the scribing into the hair and things like this. And we see, you see, this is an imitation. As the Prophet said, وَمَنْ تَشَابِهَا بِكَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ Where we imitate the people is of them. We are adopted their lifestyle. Their, like I said, and if you don't believe in something, you'll believe in anything that is given to you. Where did, this, where did this hairstyle come from? And why is it that we have imitated this hairstyle? And where are the parents to give some guidance and instruction to it? In the same way, when we see these laptops and these mobile phones full of hardcore pornography, where are the parents? Allah says in the Quran, Say yourself and your family from the fire whose fuel is men and stones. Yes, we are all responsible for our own actions. But ultimately, you know, the parents have to realize where are the boundaries that you are setting? You are in this environment, like I said, where 24-7 your children are being exposed to over-sexualized images. We're living in an over-sexualized society. And when I spoke to this young guy yesterday, last week, who had a laptop full of hardcore pornography, I said, did you have any sex education at school? He goes to a Muslim school, by the way. Did you have any sex education? No. No one has taught me about the halal and haram of this matter. What about your parents? Have your parents taught you about tahara, about cleanliness, about what your, about purity, about these things, about how haram these matters are? No one has told me anything. You see, this is the thing, brothers. We're caught between two extremes, and we have to face. This is what I'm saying. There's a battle going on, and we have to deal with this battle. On one extreme, we don't even talk about these issues. We don't give any children uh, any guidance to our children on sex education. And then they're having it. And let me tell you, and sometimes we remove them from the sex education class in school, but we don't give them anywhere else. So they're learning about sex education either in school. Does it have a moral framework, brothers? Does it teach it in a moral framework? 
Does it tell you that it's haram? Does it say, does it say, wala taqribu zina, don't come close to zina, wala yaznu, don't make zina, don't fornicate? However, does it teach them that? No, it teaches them everything about sex, and then it says, more or less, go and enjoy it, without any framework whatsoever. <coughs> That's sex education school. And then you're in a society where everywhere you look, they find there's an over-sexualization in the society. Some people call it pimping out the children from as young as 11 years old. Now this subject, certificate 18, you see when I was young, certificate 18 meant something. It means that, you know, what it basically means, certificate 18, is that after the age of 18, things become, what well, haram become halal for you. That's what it meant, you could go to the cinema and watch an indecent film. That's what, it, well, that's what it was. But you know what it meant was there was a boundary, it's called certificate 18 is a boundary. People respected that boundary when I was growing up. Today, 11-year-old kids acting like gang stars. My brother was telling me in Halifax, a 10-year-old gangster, dressed like a gangster, behaving like a, speaking like a gangster, and behaving in relation to women like a gangster as well. 11, 12-year-olds downloading hardcore pornography and watching it. And if you, this is what I'm saying, you have to realize what are the challenges. It's on free view now. It's on your own sat it's terrestrial TV now, has softcore pornography which is pumping out every evening into your home. Unless you've got it controlled, unless you've got the, uh, the TV on lockdown. So this is a, brothers, there is an absolute crisis. We're living in a society where we're overwhelmed by this. And we are not talking about these issues, we are in denial of these issues. So again, you know when we have issues, Whereas, like I said, a group of men going around, picking up girls, and then abusing those girls. This is again, a symptom of a community which is not there offering role models, and educating, and guiding. So the battle is going on, brothers. Where are our du'ad? Where are our role models? Like I said, brothers, you know, Pakistani youth, unfortunately, Pakistani youth, unfortunately, have the worst rep in this country for three reasons. One, we're seen as criminals involved in drug gangs. Secondly, sexually grooming girls. Thirdly, because we're seen as terrorists and extremists. And now fourthly, this week there was an article, Bradford is full of inbred individuals. They're abusing our community all the time. And what do we do about it except just reinforce the stereotype rather than stand up and say, not in Islam. No, this is not what Islam teaches. So look, brothers, these are the Amal of Shaitan. And it begins with Al-Khamar. Khamar. Alcohol. And when we refer to Khamar, as we know, what we are referring to isn't just, uh, brothers, uh, what is it, alcohol. As Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhu lazina amu inna mal khamru wal maysra wal ansar wal azmu rijzun min rijzun man min amal shaytan fajtanihul fajtanihul atukum tuflihun Oh, you believe intoxicants, alcohol, and gambling, and al ansar and divining and, and, and uh, is it, uh, uh, going to fortune tellers and, and uh, divination as they call it are an abomination of shaitan, are the amal of shaitan and his handwork. So avoid them. As Allah says, avoid them if you are going to be successful. These are the agents of shaitan. And these are the, and so brothers, let us not be in any confusion. What do we mean by, and alcohol is a gateway, and the doorway to all of the fahisha and indecency. Throughout the Quran, Allah says, don't come, Allah doesn't just say, okay, avoid fahisha, indecency. Allah says, don't even come kareem, close to it. And now look at the wisdom of that. Our deen is a deen which teaches us prevention <coughs> is better than call, cure. It's no point allowing something to happen and then allowing society to fall to pieces and then to rebuild it. No. Islam, the beauty is there to Islam is there to protect you and to protect your society. The Makasi, the object of the Sharia, is to protect society, protect community, to protect your mind, not to destroy these eight things. And that's why for us, even though Allah says in the Quran, alcohol. There is some good in it, there is some nafa benefit in this, for medicinal reasons. But the overall evil of it is far greater than any good that comes from it. And so it is haram. It is something that has been made impermissible. And alcohol, brothers, is the worst drug out there. It is the worst. Like I said, we had our boys, they smoke spliff, and they do this secretly 